Five treatises of the Philosopher's Stone. Two treatises by Alfonso, King of Portugal, as it was written with his own hand and taken out of his closet. Translated from Portuguese into English. One treatise by John Sautre, a monk translated into English. Another treatise written by Florianus Rodorf, a German philosopher, and translated from the same language into English. Also, a treatise on the names of the Philosopher's Stone by William Gratacol, translated in English, to which is added this maritime table, by the pains and care of H.G. London, originally printed by Thomas Harper, 1652, the epistle dedicatory to the Right Honorable, the Earl of Pembroke and Montgomery, etc. Right Honorable. Although in these last ages, vice has been esteemed above virtue, and people have focused on advancing their fortunes through wicked means, if we look back to former times, we find the figure of Hermes Trismegistus. He is said to be Moses, named so because he was hidden among the reeds in the water. Known as Hermes Trismegistus, he calls himself the thrice great interpreter, signifying that he possesses knowledge encompassing three parts of the philosophy of the entire world. This is evident in his Smeridine table, from which all modern philosophers have based their discussions and books. Thus, he might call himself this, being granted a close relationship with his creator. From him, we also received our first account of the creation of the world and all things therein. A two. In these writings, we find and are satisfied in judgment that true honor originally stemmed from virtue. It seems that those who were most honored and esteemed as virtuous, wise, good, and wealthy were those with a deep understanding of natural philosophy and its secret working. This knowledge, handed down verbally from one person to another over many ages, enabled even shepherds, herdsmen, farmers, and others of similar station, by God's special favor, to become great princes, governors, and rulers. They achieved wealth and treasures at their pleasure, as will be shown in the ensuing treatises, without robbing or overtaxing the people they govern. These individuals also used their knowledge in physical medicine to extend their lives, maintain youth, and strengthen their bodies. This is how the ancient figures mentioned in the Old Testament and other philosophers not only avoided death for so long, but also performed many miracles to the world's wonder. They possess the power and means to the greatest treasures and secrets that God ever revealed to mortal man. Your honor's noble and ingenious inclination and love for the study of this divine and mysterious art suggests a noble and virtuous disposition guided by divine instinct. Only a person with such a temperament is suitable for studying and understanding this art. Considering a person of honor to whom these treatises should be presented and reflecting on your honor's inclination virtuous disposition, and mature judgment, I feel obliged to be of. Service to the best of my ability to all faithful students of this most sacred art. I have chosen your honor as the most deserving of the presentation of not only these my current endeavors, but also of other works that I shall soon produce on this or any other subject. My intention is not to seek patronage, as is often customary, especially considering the esteemed individuals who first authored these treatises, but merely to request your honor's noble acceptance of this modest present. This gift comes from someone who sincerely wishes your honor all forms of happiness, both physical and spiritual, temporal and eternal. With this wish, I remain. My Lord, your honors, most faithful servant, eight are to the reader. Hermes, revered as the father of philosophers, plainly disclosed the substance necessary for the philosopher's stone, but not the complete method for its creation. He claimed his understanding of it was a result of divine mercy and favor, acquired without any mortal's guidance or teaching. He felt compelled to document this knowledge for future generations, fearing spiritual condemnation if he did not. Since that, hundreds of philosophers have written about this science, considered the most profound and greatest secret ever revealed by God to humans. However, their writings are so cryptic that it's nearly impossible for anyone to grasp this profound and mysterious art unless they are deeply pious, religious, and committed to a serious, secluded life, devoid of worldly distractions. A person with such devotion undoubtedly through God's mercy and with the aid of the authors mentioned here, along with some recent works and unpublished hieroglyphics soon to be printed by the publisher in Little Britain, London, can attain a comprehensive understanding of the Philosopher's Stone. These resources provide a clearer and more complete demonstration of the entire process than any other books in the world. Therefore, with the help of these writings and hieroglyphics, one can master this art with much greater ease and less difficulty than would otherwise be possible. In summer, the passage emphasizes the importance of divine grace, piety, and dedication to a life of contemplation for understanding the Philosopher's Stone, a central concept in alchemy. 
it suggests that recent and forthcoming publications, including hieroglyphics, will significantly aid in comprehending this elusive art. I have only provided a selection for use until others, which will soon be available, are published. It's important to note that few ancient philosophers wrote exhaustively about this elusive science. What one author might omit, another might include, so it's beneficial to read many of the best authors on the subject. As a longtime student of this art and convinced of its truth after studying numerous renowned authors, I felt it important for the benefit of faithful students of this art to publish these works. I was greatly encouraged to do so by some of my closest friends. This is also to prevent students of this art from being misled by false philosophers and from working on false materials like salts, a lump, vitriol, metal, mineral, and the like. Consider the words of George Ripley, an English monk, who stated that the matter of this work, according to all ancient philosophers, is just one thing, containing all that is necessary for its own perfection. And Henricus Cornelius Agrippa, in the second book of his Occult Philosophy, chapter 4, mentioned that there is one thing, created by God, subject to all wonder, existing both in earth and in heaven. It is animal, vegetable, and mineral, found everywhere, known by few, and not expressed in its proper name, but covered in numbers, figures, and riddles, without that neither alchemy nor natural magic can reach their perfect end. And in the Rosary of the Philosopher, it is written that one should not delve into this science without understanding the beginning of true nature and its governance. Once known, one doesn't need many things, but just one thing. It doesn't require great expenses, as the stone, the medicine, the vessel, the perfection, the governance, and the disposition are all one. Let this suffice. From your faithful but unknown friend, H.P., the Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trismegistus of Alchemy. The greatest of the secrets of Hermes, which were written on an emerald tablet found between. His hands in a hidden vault where his body lay buried. It is true, without falsehood, certain and most true, that what is below is like that which is above and what is above is like that which is below. To perform the miracles of one thing, and as all things have come from one, through the mediation of one, so all things have arisen from this one thing by adaptation. Its father is the sun, its mother the moon. The wind carried it in its belly. The earth is its nerve. The father of all the perfection of this world is here. Its force and power are perfect if it is converted into earth. You shall separate the earth from the fire, the subtle from the dense, gently and with great ingenuity. It ascends from the earth to the heavens and again descends to the earth, receiving the power of the superiors and the inferiors. Thus, you will have the glory of the whole world, and all darkness will flee from you. This is the strong force of all forces, overcoming every subtle thing and penetrating every solid thing. Thus was the world created. From this come many wondrous adaptations, of which this is the mean. Therefore, I am called Hermes Trismegistus, having the three parts of the philosophy of the whole world. What I have said about the operation of the sun is complete. Here ends the Tablet of Hermes, a treatise written by Alfonso, king of Portugal, concerning the Philosopher's Stone, chapter 1. Fame brought to my knowledge that in the land of Egypt there lived a learned man that foretold things to come. He judged by the star and the motions of the heavens, those things which time was to bring forth which were by him before understood. A desire of knowledge carried my affection, my pet, My tongue, with great humility, I prostrated the height of my majesty. Such power hath passion upon man. With entreaty in my special letters unto him, I sent for him by my messengers, promising him with a sound affection, great reward both in goods and money. The wise man answered me with much courtesy. I know you are a great king, and that neither presents, nor the law of silver nor gold, nor anything of great value. But merely out of affection I will serve you. For I do not seek that which is too much for me, and therefore I seek not after yours, but you. I sent the best of my ships, which being arrived. At the port of Alexandria, the doctor astrologer came aboard, and was brought to me courteous with love. For having known his great worth by understanding the motions of the spheres, I always held him in that esteem and love which is due to a learned man. The stone which is called the philosophers he could make, he taught it to me, and we made it together. And afterwards I made it alone, by which means my riches increased much, and seeing that I was able to do such a thing, and that diverse ways, which always produce the same thing, I will propound unto you the most easy, and therefore the most excellent and principal. I had a library of books of the works of men of many nations, but I in this business did esteem neither the Chaldean, neither the Arabians, though a diligent people, nor the Egyptians, Assyrians, but those of the East, which inhabit the Indies 
and the Saracens did my work, and so well that they have honored our western parts. The present time makes me to know a sound and true judgment. Because thou shouldst give credit or belief to it, do not conceive that I have lied in any point. That which I look at is not to bury in oblivion the great worth that was in him my master, but I will not give such an empire to any man but to him that is learned. Now to unriddle this mystery and to propose truths and ciphers, though they are obscure, yet by them you may learn and shall find they are no vain things. And if you come to understand this great mystery, have it not in your ordinary conversation, but leave it in the same cipher of this impression, if you understand how to explain it. This matter by wise men is called by diverse names, and this matter which to the unwise seems to be something, to them is nothing, and its nature being equally moist and dry that it will not give one without another, which is a singular thing to have two such different natures meet together in one. The dry is there in a supreme degree. The moist likewise calls for a supreme authority. The hot and cold fight there together and are contained there likewise in a supreme degree, and from that a quality. Comes the name of each of these severally according to the quality. And though the moist be joined with the drop, yet each of them retains its own name. Our Hermes tells us that it is heaven and earth, but others call it man and wife, and out of their marriage they make other riddles, which serve for a light to the infirm globe. And from thence are called by sob, water or earth, others the cold which is enclosed in heat, so much the wise may understand. The ancient chaos according to my judgment, was knit together by the four elements. This composition is the light. When the division comes to be made, the heaven and the earth comes to be a fifth essence of all, for this matter is of that kind, that it composes all things. In this matter are found united the four elements in equal parts, so that if one walk or move, the others do the like, for by one the others are conducted. So much are they equal in their duties one to another. And where can you hope to find a better thing amongst all animals than that which is so much approved by all wise men. Take the learned philosopher's mercury, and let it be purged from its malignancy and foul quality, for it cannot be too clean, and see that the weight be equal with twelve ounces of the said composition, and then put it into a glass bottle, for no metal else is fit for it. And the top of the glass must be of the form of the sphere, with a long neck, and no thicker than can be grasped with a large hand, and the length of the neck not above a span, and no wider. Then the Egyptian seal may cover its mouth. This you must put into an earthen pot, surrounded about with hot ashes, and be sure with a careful hand to stop up the bottle. And then you must have an artificial furnace made of clay, so broad and round as that you may fathom at the thickest place. You must not put the pot in the bottom of the furnace, but hang it or set it in the middle upon two iron, which must lie diameter-wise, or across. And the earthen pot must stand upon the very center and cross of the two irons, that the fire may come alike to it in all parts, and then with coals make a soft fire. But let not your patience be troubled to keep it always alike. The fire must not come within a foot of the pot, and the furnace looted up close about the pot, that so the soft fire may keep it always working, and be not troubled to keep the fire still alike. For if it be the same at last as at first, thou hast done the work of an able man. B3. Be like to ink. So distinct shall be the form of this creature from its first being. Have you not seen the prison which the silkworm makes for itself, where it dies, and out of that carcass dead in the net itself made, and which no corruption can come, but rises again in a form distinct from its first being, then is brought forth and paints itself, with wings in a more ugly shape? So our work begins to live with a new spirit and new substance, from whence must be continued the perseverance of the body, that so blood may be gotten in it. Do not you then think of making a greater fire? for by that means the blood and body will be destroyed. Then shall you see the most excellent point of this divine work. Open the bottle, and it will seem to be ruined, for there will come from it a very stinking smell. In this degree is certainly the greatest labor of this work, for if it be continued with the same heat, it will certainly come to the highest degree of perfection. After this color is passed, you shall see many more different in their likeness and appearance, the argos and the iris in their splendor, that the following of the liquid humor will cause to be of. Diverse colors until it comes at last to a certain whiteness, then augment a little the heat. Friend, be not weary of your work, and let it not trouble your patience, for this is the first point of getting your inheritance. When the stone has come to the whiteness, it is then fixed, and can never be disunited, though it should burn a hundred years, for the union is perfect. Keep, as I have told you, the fire in one degree, that it may come to such a whiteness as to be, like the pure snow, which is called the silver elixir, 
but in regard that gold is more precious than esteem, let it alone in the bottle with the same fire, until the stone has come from its white into a citron color. Then increase the fire another degree, and thou shalt attain to a pure red. All being raised up will show your work to be secure. The body of this being taken up will be hard and light, and in it you may take notice of the body of diamond and the color of a ruby, as in my own hands myself has seen it, for which the great God is by me praised. Then put this into an earthen vessel, covered with a cover of the same, like a dish, and this so well joined or looted together, of the bigness to hold three gallons, according to the bigness of the stone, and put it on a hot fire of flaming wood there to boil. Here the stone will calcine in ten days of the sun, or Sunday, etc., and being taken out of that pot, it will be an impalpable and divine powder. The first substance which does good to all, from whence it hath no quality in its quintessence, but is applied to all, and hath power to do all, and very being of the thing that is applied to. Infected from the beginning of natural causes, it is neither gold, nor silver, nor other mineral, nor subject to the form of any vegetable, but hath a disposition to do good to all. If it be applied to gold, from it it takes firmness, as to convert other things into that metal. For if demand, by famous work, it gives him health, what can be esteemed more precious? Under this impalpable goal, it happens that there is found a bright earth, but very black and glittering, which is not the best, however, for that which is very red is fixed and stable, though it be mixed with all composition, and so makes no aggression, but its virtues are very admirable. But with equal weight, thou must unite it with its first principal matter, very pure, and join or mix them together very carefully, if you would have it be brought to life. And then, as I told you before, let it come to the moderate heat as at the first, and in the light glass as I prescribed before, very close shut. And as thou didst with the fire at the first, so must thou do it now, and in very short time thou shalt see it become black, and of the other colors spoken of before, until it comes to be red, and will presently turn into a stone. This have I seen done in a short time, and he that knows it not, let him know that he walks blindfold. I have told you the work in plain word, and how I did it, and saw it wrought, so I did it, and had the reward. And it is no fallacy, seeing that I am a witness to it, for which I praise and bless God, which gave me sufficient of knowledge, science, riches, honor, and state, which let me never forget. If thou wouldst have a division of this into a hundred parts, and so ad infinitum, it must be done before it hath formation or hardness, and then your work will be certain. Take an earthen vessel covered, and in it put your quicksilver, and when it begins to run open, drop in your elixir, otherwise you cannot keep it from running open. Of gold, one part being purged by aquafortis with 4% of quicksilver wash, and 4 of what is spoken of before, joined with great art with one of your elixir, and put it apart in a crooked glass or retort. And let it feel a fire of coals ten days together, until they be all mixed together. And if you will make a further progression, put into an earthen pot one hundred grains of quicksilver, and put it over a flaming fire. And when the quicksilver begins to smoke and fly away in fume, cast in one part of your elixir, and then cover it. Then let it cool, and it shall prove a very sovereign medicine. One hundred parts of quicksilver, according to the fineness of it, this shall convert into gold. But if you desire to make experience and see the operation upon leap, you shall there find it as well, neither doth it stay there. For its ingress retains that faculty to turn all metals into gold, to everything it is to be applied, and it converts everything into a well-conditioned nature. Half a grain of this taken into the mouth makes the party strong, the weak and feeble. It makes so lusty that no man was ever more healthy, and time which is precious to all brings those that take it, sound to their graves. The jest of beasts invites from his supreme dwelling place, the most unfortunate of all, joining together two extremes, after which most shall see him in his greatest dignity and majesty, which now is most distant from it. Say nothing till thou feel the water produce that which, if afterward twined into fire, but if thou feel that play, then hide not what else thou knowest. For it is worth full eight hundred years, for he being come to that pass, then thou shalt know the worth of it. Then shall he accomplish the fatal time to see my treasure and myself, and myself enclosed or contain my life. I shall not be obscured, and thou shalt remain with my gift, that in this darkness thou shalt feel such a light where a world shall be represented. See the second treatise of Alfonso, king of Portugal, concerning the philosopher's stone. The past work of the most pure stone is so infinite in multiplying that it is never weary to give, and to give more. Such a likeness has it to its workmanship. But if you would know another way to separate the four elements, know that this following treatise understood 
will teach you to do it with more brevity and security. Two ounces of gold well refined with one of silver, very fine and pure, melted in clay, and this mixture being filed very small, and with purged mercury ground until it be well incorporated one into another. Then put such a quantity of common salt so well mixed as that the body may be well conglutinated. Take a glass bottle, subtle to mix thee, so that no unclean thing may come to it, though never so little, and then upon a small fire so work it, as that the mercury may consume or vanish in its own fume. Then you may presume the gold will remain being its body that will endure the fervency of the fire. Wash the matter of this mixture in pure fountain water, so that after many washings, the water will remain many times clean and retain its sweetness of taste. Then weigh the matter that remains, and if you find it heavier than it was at first, grind it again with salt enough and put it to the fire again as before. Thus I tell you, you must do your work, and in a very soft fire, and when it comes to be of its first weight, that which then remains will be a matter spongy and subtle, and so well disposed and prepared, that you may use it in any physic. And now you must make a preparation with sublimed mercury, copper, and salt well washed, for our physic and real conjunction gives it afterwards his life, grinding it with salt very small. Then in a glass bottle which has his receiver put it to make his distillation. But know that within the receiving glass you must put water, and place the bottle in a strong furnace, and make a fire of coals under it, and letting it seethe or boil softly, and it will turn quick, or living, and be much subject to corruption, and with this work securely and be not weary. Nine of these with three of the first composition, joined and well mixed and ground together, and all these and the other are put into a round glass that has a neck of a span or palm long, and then stop the mouth very close, for which purpose the mouth must not be made wide, but narrow. Thus I tell you the glass must be, and of a bigness to hold the quantity of three gallon, and according to the roundness of it, so have a place fitted to put it in the fire, that there the matter may be well joined or mashed together, then will the tincture be made. C2. Forty gallons. Then shalt thou see the east adorned with the beams of the sun, when this work shall be accomplished according to desire, to change the present glade into another, which serves for the receiver of a still, which being close looted with lutium sapientiae and hot water, which it must not touch. The fire must not be of any great heat, but moderate, that it may work its effect, distilling its water in a perfect manner, and then do the same work over again. Join the matter with great wisdom. With this is distilled water, join mercury, of an equal weight with the first matter. Note my words which I will tell thee, that now thou shalt come to putrefy it, and after forty days put it into the still, keeping the same order as before, for the glass and the fire, take this distilled water, and in the place where it falls, put in an equal weight of the first matter as aforesaid. Do this work as at the first, for it must be thrice reiterated from time to time, receiving the water that the fire will give to the very last. Think not the time light, and though you pass the forty days and more, yet still keep the water in a glass bottle. Change it from the receiving glass into a nut, and put it upon hot ashes, and then thou shalt have, or draw out a lighter element in weight, called air, which you must subtly put into a bottle. And stop the mouth of it very close with Hermes' seal and its neck also. Be careful that you let not forth the air. Put in, or to the glass, another receiver after, having strongly looted it, and make such a fire as that, by his great heat, the pot may distill. This element keep with carefulness, for it is the element of fire. And then... Thanks be to God, in this work you have separated the four elements. After the division of this chaos, you must now think of joining them together again. For if you mean to join and make that world which was disunited, the only matter which is in the bottom of the glass must be retained or kept and softened by grinding, and then the composition put into a glass. Let this glass be round-bodied and long-necked, which glass or bottle you must fortify by looting, and set it upon the coals, that it may have the force of the fire. In such a manner that it may rise ten degrees Titan's wife of the beloved bed, and in this manner it will be converted into a hard substance. In another like glass, put this with a quarter of its weight of the reserved water, and then stop the mouth of it well, and put it in a brass furnace or vessel, and put it upon hot ashes, and keep such a fire to it as the matter may become dry as it was before. This being done, and the congealing and drying being passed, as I have said, do the like again, with its fourth or quarter part of that royal water. The infusion must be reiterated, in the fourth time ended of doing the same work, know that you have satisfied the drought or thirst that this substance had after that water. Have you not seen the earth when it wants rain? How barren it shows. No fruit to be seen, but all looks like a fallow ground, and everything like to perish. But if the rain falls to refresh it, it makes it fruitful for generation or increase, 
and every seed that is sown. C3. In its proper time brings forth its fruit and continuing disperses its watery power into all plants and tree and makes the fruit appear on every bough. Even so goes this matter preparing. The air which you kept in the bottle, you must give drink to five several times, the tenth part of its quantity at a time, so that in all it must have half its own weight, and always at every time be dried up. Then on a copper plate in a flaming fire try this matter, if it will consume in smoke, for you must presume it to be of the nature of the Ganymedes to fly up to heaven. But if it flies not upwards, then it is not yet well done, but you must give it more water, and try again whether or no it has his true spirit. Cause it to drink a quarter part of its weight that first it was up, which will be the tenth part of the air, and as you did it before, so do it again. Then prove it upon the copper plate, to try if it will evaporate in smoke, then turn again to what you did before. Then put the matter in sublimation, and when you shall see it all rise up, that which rises not, but remains in the bottom. Give it drink again according as is aforesaid, prove it again upon the plate, and so. Continually try it till it rises, and then you shall be sure that in the bottom will remain a black earth like a dead body in the glass. As the Ganymedes went up to heaven, so thou shalt see this matter exalted. It shall be demanded from the God of the earth, by Jove, from whom it was stolen, it having been left with Demogorgon, and shall be restored, and if thou sublimate it, oftentimes grinding it until it comes at last to be firm, it will all remain in the bottom of the glass. To this matter there wants ingress, because there wants the fourth element. Therefore make this operation in a fire neither great nor little, but when thou puttest it in its inflammation, take the pot, and be sure that not one drop or tittle of any foul thing comes to it before thou see infusion. If then thou seest it become like wax that it will rope, then thou hast a vast great treasure, that thy estate shall be advanced to more than the riches of Midas. One hundred parts of mercury put on the fire, and when it begins to fume away, then temper it with one of this matter, and presume thou hast brought it to the perfect medicine. And if another time thou doest the same work, one part of this applied to a hundred percent will turn likewise to the second medicine, and one part of this is a great reward, being applied to a hundred parts of mercury hot, or any other metal being melted, making it become gold most high and sublime, for which the Lord be praised. Phoenix the book of John Sartre, a monk, concerning the philosopher's stone. All things consisting of natural bodies, as well perfect as imperfect, in the beginning of creation were compounded and made of four natures, and those four natures be the four elements, viz. Fire, air, water, and earth, the which God omnipotent did congelate, mingle, and married together in his massive poise. For in these four elements is the privity hid of philosophers, and when their natures becoming and reduced together into one, then they are made another thing, whereupon it appeareth that all things universal and variable be of the four elements, engendered naturally and changed together. Whereupon Rasa saith, simple generation and natural permutation is the operation of the elements. But it is necessary that elements be of one kind and not diverse, for otherwise they have not action and passion together. For as Aristotle saith, there is no true generation but of such as be convenient and agreeing amongst themselves. Therefore do not search that thing of nature that is not of nature, or things not according to their nature. For the elder tree doeth not bring forth pears, nor the thorn tree pomegranates. D. For we do never gather grapes of thorns, or figs of thistles. For they offer no things but such as are like themselves, nor do they bring forth other fruit than their own. Therefore it is necessary that our medicine be taken chiefly of such things as it consists in, but there be many men busying themselves and meddling greatly and diversely therein, that nowadays go about to get the same medicine of dry stones and divers kinds of salt, as of sal alkali, sal gem, sal ammoniac, cinder of orpiment, cinnabar, atramentum, saffron, burnt bread, vitriol, roman, verdigris, sulfur, or pigmentum, arsenic, and such other unfruitful matters, whereas neither salts nor alums do go in, or be compounded in our work. But the philosophers named it salts and alums instead of the elements as theophrastus and lith. But if thou desire to make the elixir wisely and perfectly, then learn to know the mineral roots, and make of them thy work. For as Geber saith, thou shalt not find the term or end of the thing in the veins of the earth. For sulfur and mercury, which be the roots mineral, and natural principles, that nature doth make the foundation of her operations once, as in the minerals and chambers of the earth, be water, viscous, and a stinking spirit running by the veins and bowels of the earth. And of them doth spring a fume, which is the mother of all metals, joined by a more temperate heat, ascending and reverberating again upon his upper earth. 
until that by temperate decoction in the term of 1,000 years is made a certain natural fixation, as more plainly it doth appear, and so is made metal. As appeareth in the books of Geber, even so of soul, which is our sulfur reduced into mercury by mercury, is made a batter, thick, and mixed with his or its earth by temperate decoction. And from it rise veins of this proper earth, one of himself, which afterward is changed into a water, most subtle, which is called anima, spiritus, and tincture, that is, the soul, the spirit, and tincture. And when the same water is reduced upon the earth from whence it came, and sprinkled upon his own veins, it comes into a certain fixation, and is made the elixir complete. And so art doth work in a short time, the whole manner, more than nature doth work in a thousand years. But yet we do not make metal, but nature doth make it. We do not change metals, but nature doth change them. But we be nature's help or ministers. Whereupon Merlin in Turba Philosopherum saith, that although our stone being perfectly created in the earth, doth naturally contain in itself a tincture, yet by himself. He hath no motion to move to be elixir, unless thereto he be moved by art. Therefore let us choose the natural and next mineral according to the words of Aristotle. For nature hath procreated all metallic bodies of a fume, sulfur and mercury, wherein thou shalt find no philosopher disagreeing. Therefore it behooves thee to know the principles of this art, and the principal root thereof, for he that doth not know the right beginning shall never find the right end thereof. For Geber saith in the beginning of his book, he that knows not our beginning in himself is far from attaining or understanding of this science, for he is not the true root or origin wherein one may. D2. Should raise this art or science or work, also in another place he saith, it behooves that our art be found out by a natural wit and a subtle soul, searching forth the natural principles and true foundations. But although that a man may know his principle, yet nevertheless he cannot in this follow nature in all things, as Geber testifies. So, of this art of alchemy, we do open to thee a great secret. Many artists in this art do greatly err, which do think to follow nature in all properties and differences. Therefore these things thus shortly pass over, as is aforesaid, let us come to that part of the work artificial. Many men do write at the stone, name the philosopher's stone, but how or of what it is made. No philosopher did plainly and openly name, for in these points diverse men taught diverse things, whereas the truth doth consist in one thing only, but without doubt and without all error, we say that this stone, which is the root of our art and privity, or hidden secret of God, and whereof many wise men did treat, who did of it make, and did knit many knots, and so deceived many men in making them thereby fools, is none other thing but man and woman. Soul and Luna, hot and cold. Sulfur and mercury, and here stick down your stake, staying only and leaving to search further for any other stone, or foolishly to consume thy money, and to bring to thy soul heavy thoughts, or sadness, for what thou sowest thou shalt reap. And forasmuch as this stone is divided into two parts, we will speak a little of the first part, Saul, and note that without it, our work cannot be done, as I well prove by authority of learned philosophers. For Aristotle, he saith, of all things in this world, soul is most important, and it is the firmament of white and red, without which it is not done. Also, Avicenna saith, there is no true tincture but of our brass, that is to say, soul, for all soul is brass, but all brass is not soul, so all soul is sulfur, but contrary for in it is nothing of the corruption of sulfur, but when it is made white in the work, then it worketh the operation of white sulfur, congealing and converting mercury into soul. Of the color named oropigmentum in Latin, therefore use always the nobler mem, that is to say, soul. For it is the kind of kinds and form of forms. For it is the first and last in metals, and it is amongst them in their natures. As the sun is amongst the stars, but it doth concern thee to understand well how to choose in what noble member water, or a thing homogeneous to both the lights in the world. That is to say soul, for soul is homogeneous, and the spirit hid and covered in that noble member, without which the work is not done. Wherefore, racist saith, do not color it until this hid spirit be drawn out and made all spiritual, and therefore work thou nothing but that which is very light and of the most pure soul, which doth illuminate and lighten all lights, and casteth away all darkness of the night by his power biz. The superfluity of mercury and other imperfect bodies when that it is cast upon them. Wherefore, Geber saith in the chapter of the quintessence and projection of the stone, this sulfur, lightening and casting forth his beams, and shining abroad of his most clear substance, doth irradiate and giveth light not only in the day. D3. But also in the darkness whereupon Pandolphus Colonusius, a philosopher, saith, O my brother, know ye that there is no body more precious or purer than soul, 
For as the ruby hath in itself the effect of all precious stones, so Saul hath in itself the virtue of all stones and metals ductile. For it contains in itself all metal and colors and quickens them, when he is most noble of them and of all bodies, and the head and the best of them. And consider this one point. That soul is equal in the qualities and parts of it, and it is of a complete nature of the four elements, without any excess or defect. For by nature it hath part of heat, and part of coldness, part of dryness, and part of humidity. For it is not corrupted, nor corruptible, by the air, nor by the water, nor by the infection of the earth, or by the force or violence of the fire. Yet it mollifies, reddens, and adorns it, because his complexion is temperate, and his nature direct and equal. Therefore that stone is best of all stones, that is most compact and nearest, or most akin to the fire. The second part of our stone is called mercury, which is himself, and of the philosophers is called a stone, and yet is no stone. Whereupon a certain wise man, whereas he speaketh of it, saith, This is a stone, and yet no stone, without which nature doth never work any thing, which both doth and drinks up the work. And of it doth appear every color, whose name is Mercury or Argent Five. Whereupon Rhesus saith of it, A work may be created so, that the same work may overcome all natures, it is friendly to all metals, and the means to join tincture for. In itself it receives that which is of its nature, and doth vomit forth again that which is strange, or enemy to its nature, for it is in uniform substance in all its part. The medicine stone is named of the philosopher's mineral, vegetable, and animal, and also artificial. It is called mineral because it is engendered in the mind and is mother of all metals, or else it is called mineral because when there is projection made upon it, it is turned into metal, and it is called vegetable. For of the juice of three herbs mixed together in equal proportions, that they stand in a moist fire forty days, there will be grown forth thereof a stone of the same color and virtue of the mineral. For the herbs be mercury purslane, called portulaca, or may which yieldeth milk, and selendai, it is also called animal or vital because of himself without any other thing put into it, his elements being separated and united together in equal weight. And then set in a strong glass with a little hole to take air in the aforesaid fire, within three months there will engender horrible worms, whereof every one will slay one another, until that one only will remain, which, if the master feed wisely, it will grow and wax to the bigness of a toad, whose form is terrible. And this beast is by himself elixir upon Saturn and Jupiter, or it is called animal, because it is made of a thing that hath life. That is to say man. For in old hedges it is found of the putrefaction of man's dung, and ordinately heated with a subtle vessel of glass. And therefore the philosopher said, Our stone is found in every man, and that of the vilest thick, and of a most vile price. Wherefore Pythagoras saith, This stone is animal, because it is apt to bring forth children. Also he saith, It is cast in dung guilt. And therefore it is vile and neglected in the eyes of the ignorant man. Also in the book, which is called Speculum Alchemiae, it is said, This stone is cast away in the street, and is found in Dungil, the which contains in itself all the four elements, and ruleth them. And this stone is artificial, for by man's wit it is knit together, for certain men make mercury of lead in this manner. They melt Saturn, or lead, seven times, and every time they draw it with sal ammoniac dissolved. Afterwards they take of that Saturn three pounds, and a vitriol one pound, and a borax half a pound. And then they do mingle all together, and put it underneath the philosopher's fire by forty natural day, and then it is made mercury, and there is no difference between it and natural mercury, but that it does not go into our work, as natural mercury doth. Know thou the clean from the unclean, for nothing gives that which it hath not. For the clean is of one essence, void of alterations. The unclean thing is diverse, and of contrary part, and of a light or easy corruption, therefore put in thy work no strange thing. Nor let anything go into our stone, except such as is sprung from it, neither in part nor yet in the whole. For if any strange thing be put into it, it will by and by corrupt. Nor will that be made thereof, which is expected. Therefore purge the yellow body by the addition of the fire, and then thou shalt find it purged. And after that thou hast it well purged, beat it most strong and utterly, and make it into thin plates. And after beat them into leaves, the thinnest that can be possibly as gold beaters do, and then so keep them. But the white liquor hath more superfluities, which must of necessity be removed. For they be feculent of the earth, which is the impediment of melting, and humidity fugitive, which is the impediment of fixation. The earthiness feculent is taken away thus. Put it into a mortar of marble or wood, and add to it as much common clean dry salt and a little vinegar, and stir them strongly about. 
and rub it very strongly with a pestle of wood wisely, that there do appear nothing of the liquor, and that all the salt be all black, then wash all the matter with clean hot water, until the salt be resolved into water, and then pour the same foul water away, and then put it to the liquor of salt and vinegar, as thou didst before, and do this oftentimes, until the liquor be made as clean and shining as glass, or of the color of heaven. And last of all, put it into a thick linen cloth, twice or thrice doubled, and then strain it forth twice or thrice into a thick vessel of glass, until it be dry. The proportion of the parts is such, for there be twenty-four hours in a natural dip, to which add one, and then there be twenty-five. This is wisdom. For Geber saith in his fourth book and sixth chapter, Study in thy work to overcome. The quicksilver in thy commission. Also races saith, Bodies be of a great perfection, wherefore more quicksilver is necessary. And he saith, That wise men hide nothing but the weight in quantities, and this we may know because none do agree with other in weight. Therefore there is a great error, for although the medicine be well prepared, he will mingle together unless that there be equal quantity, thou hast destroyed all, as to the verity and final complement, and that shalt thou see in the trial. For when that the body transmuted be put into incineration, there it will be consumed late or soon, according as little or much is changed into equality of the proportions by right. According to reason, it will never be corrupted. Therefore no man can pass through it, unless that he be a wise man, that doeth all things according to reason, and true subtlety, and natural wit. Euclid, being a wise man, counseled us that we should work but in soul and mercury, which joined together doth make the philosopher's stone, whereupon Rasa saith, white and red do proceed from one root. No body of any other kind coming between or meddling of the kind of soul, yet it being matter and form absent, all the effect is deprived. Quonium ex materia et forma fit generatio vera. That is to say, very true generation is made of form and matter. Therefore it behooveth thee to know that no stone or precious stone, nor any other thing besides this stone is convenient. Nor yet doth agree to this work, but thou hadst need to labor about the solution of the yellow body, reducing it to his first matter. Wherefore racist saith, we truly do dissolve gold, that it may be reduced into his first nature, that is to say, mercury, and when that they be bruised asunder. Then they have in themselves tincture abiding. Wherefore racist in the flowers of alchemy saith, make the marriage between the red husband and the white wife, and thou shalt have the mastery. Also Aristotle saith in his book, Candida si rubeo mulieri sic mixta marito, mixta amplexentur, confisiuntur, teque solvitur. Per se quo confisimur, et duo qui foran unum quasi corporfion. If the white is mixed with the red bride in such a way, makes they embrace, are completed, you are dissolved, through you we are also completed, and the two that were become almost one body. And truly our dissolution is no other thing but that the body be turned again into moistness and his quicksilver into his own nature be removed again. Therefore, unless our brass be broken and crushed asunder, and ruled by himself until it be drawn from his thickness, and that it be turned into a thin spirit. This labor is in vain, whereupon it is said in the book called Speculum Alchemiae, that the first work of this work is the body reduced into water, that is to mercury, and that is that the philosophers call solution, which is the foundation of all the work, and it makes the body of more liquefaction and of a more hid and privy subtlety, which said solution by little. And little is done by contritions, and light roasting. Wherefore, racists say, the disposition of our stone is, that it be put into his vessel, and be so diligent, until all do ascend and rise up and be dissolved. And it is spoken in Specula Philosophora, that the philosopher's stone doth arise from a vile thing unto a more precious treasure. That is to be understood, that the sperm of Saul is to be cast into the matrix of mercury, by bodily copulation or conjunction, and joining of them together. Also, Tithagoras saith that when it is put together with his light and be mercurified, it is a young tree, bringing forth fruit for the soul. The spirit and the tincture may from thenceforth be drawn out of him by temperate heat, whereupon he saith, You artificers of alchemy, know you, eat you, that their kinds cannot be truly transmuted unless that it be reduced into his first matter. Also, Geber saith, all the whole thing may be made only of mercury or luna, for when that soul is brought into his first beginning by mercury, then nature embraces his own proper nature. And then there is in it an easiness of drawing forth his subtle substance. Wherefore Avicenna saith, take things of their own mind, and exalt them to their roots and beginnings. Also the called lumen luminum saith, that except that a man do cast the red with the fairness away, he can by no means come to the sulfur, lightning, and ruddiness. Also, Rasa saith in the seventh chapter, 
he that knows how to turn soul into Luna, he knows also how to turn soul into soul. Wherefore Pandolphus Colonusius and Turbo Philosophorum saith, He that is wisely brought forth the venom out of soul in his shadow, without which no coloring venom is engendered. And he that goes about by any manner of ways to make coloring venom without this. He loses his labor and enjoys nothing but sorrow for all his hopes. The vessel of our stone is one wherein all the mastery is fulfilled. And it is a cucurbit or gourd with a limbeck round above and beneath. Plain, without any scapula, not too hot, whose bottom be round after the fashion of an egg, or of an urinal with plain sides, that it being made thin, it may ascend and descend most freely and easily, and let the vessel be of such quantity, that the fourth part thereof may contain all the matter. And note that it is not of any other metal but glass, clean, which is a body full of light and shining everything through it, and lacking pores, showing also the colors in the work appearing whereby the spirit's passing may successively vanish away, it must also be made right convenient and meet wisely, that nothing may enter in by it. Whereupon Lully saith, Let the vessel be shut strongly with ludum sapientiae, that nothing may pass forth, nor enter into it, for if his dew should pass forth, or some other strange humor should enter in. All the work should thereby lose his effect. And although it is said by the philosophers very often, put it into his vessel and shut it strongly, yet sufficeth but once to put it in, and shut it, and in that thou hast fulfilled all the mastery for that, that is more is done of evil. Whereupon racist saith, keep it continually, wisely, shut, and set it about with dew, ever taking heed that this dew does not pass forth into a fume. Also in speculum alchemy it is said, the philosopher's stone must remain closely shut in his vessel until it hath drunk up his humidity, and that it be nourished perfectly with the heat of the fire till it be made white. Also it is said in the book called Beneloquium, even as there be in a natural egg three things, viz. the shell, the white, the yolk, even so there be in the philosopher's stone three things. First, the vessel, the glass for the eggshell, the white liquor for the white of the egg, and the yellow body for the yolk of the egg, and there becomes a bird of the yellow and white of the egg by a little heat of the mother. The eggshell still remaining whole until the chicken does come forth, even so by every manner of wise in the philosopher's stone is made of the yellow body. E3, and white liquor by mediation of a temperate heat of the mother, the earthly substance Hermes bird, the vessel still remaining whole, and never opened until his full perfection. Keep therefore the vessel diligently and wisely closed with ludum sapientiae. Theophrastus, that the spirit do not pass forth. Also racist saith, keep the vessels with his cloth enclosures, that thou mayest be able and strong in the keeping of his spirit. Also in another place. Shut thy vessel diligently, and do not in any sort make haste, nor cease from thy work. Also take heed that the humidity do not pass out of the vessel, and thy work thereby perish. For Socrates saith, Bruise them in most strong vinegar, and seethe it until that it be thick. And take heed that thy vinegar do not turn into a fume, and perish or vanish of the fire. The philosophers in their books have chiefly put two fire, a dry and a moist. For the dry fire they call it the common fire of any manner of thing combustible that will burn. But the moist fire they call the hot venter equinum, which may be English, the horse belly, but rather it is horse dung, wherein remaining moisture. There doth remain heat, and the moisture once consumed, it ceaseth to be hot, and this heat doth remain but in a little quantity, or but five or six days. But this heat may be kept a longer time, by sprinkling him with urine and salt oftentimes. For of this fire Pythagoras saith, the fire of the belly of a horse hath property not to destroy oil, but to augment it by reason of his humidity, whereas up fires do destroy it for their heat. Also, Senior saith, dig up a grave and lay the wife with her husband in the paunch or belly of a horse, or rather in horse dung, until they be freely with their good wills married and conjoined together. Also, Alphidanus saith, hide thy medicine in a moist horse dung, which is the wise man's fire. For the fire of this dung is hot and moist and obscure having within it humid and under holy light. And therefore there is none like to this in all the world, but only the natural fire of a hot man's body that is in health, and this is the secret cause of the strife of the sea, and not fully combust blood of man. And the blood of the red wine is cursor, the regimen of our fires is such, that the medicine to white must be put into the moist fire, until the full complement of whiteness, and that the heat must be slow and continual from the beginning, until the color of whiteness appearing in the vessel. For the slow fire is the conservation of humidity, whereupon Pandolphus saith, Brethren, know that the body is dissolved with the spirit whereunto it is mixed by a most slow decoction, 
and so the body is thereby made spiritual with the spirit. Also as to a saith, the slow fire doth send forth the spirits of life, the excessive fire doth not make equal the elements, but rather it wasteth the humidity and destroyeth all things. Therefore Rasa saith in his high work, take heed in thy sublimation and liquefaction, lest that when you set your fire on fire. The water also do ascend to the top of the vessel, for if it be so, then it being cold it will stick there, and so thou canst not make thy sulfur, nor open thy element, because it is necessary, that every one of them in their spheric or spiritual motion be very often thrust down and lifted up, for only the temperate fire is inspective and preservative of mixture. Therefore Alphadanius saith, a slow fire, which is called a clear fire, is the greatest cause of true operation in the elements. Also Rasis saith, it is our light fire, as an egg that is nourished, until the body be derived, and the tincture drawn forth. For by light decoction the fire congeals the water, and draws forth the humidity of the corruptive part, and the combustion of dryness is prevented. Also, all the benefit of this work is in the temperateness of the fire. Therefore, always take heed of a greater fire, that thou come not before thy time to solution. For that bringeth to desperation, wherefore racist saith, Take heed of the intention of the fire, for if it be set on fire before the time, then it is made red before the due time, which doth not profit. And that he may show thee the time of decoction, he saith, the solution of the body. And the congelation of the spirit must needs be made with light decoction of the fire and with moist putrefaction in forty days. Also hear Hortulana saying, Know ye that in mingling them together, it behooveth you to mingle a crude, quick, sincere, and right elements together upon a soft fire, and to take heed of the intention of the fire until the elements be joined together. Bonella saith also, By a temperate heat the body is made sweet and convenient, be of a constant mind in thy work, and do not labor in or upon diverse matters or things, proving sometimes this matter, and sometimes another. For in the multitude or diversity of things thy art consists not, nor is finished, for there is but one subject or medicine, one vessel, one regiment, and one disposition thereof. For all the matter doth begin in one manner of fashion, and endeth in one manner of mansion. Yet the philosophers did put many works and crafts thereof for the honor and hiding. In prolonging of this art as to seethe, to mingle together, to roast, to sublime, to grind, to break, or beat asunder, to congeal, to adequate, or make even inquality, to putrefy, to make white, to make red, of which things yet there is but one regiment, which is but to decoct only. Therefore crush it asunder, and see still that thou be not weary. Also races saith, seed without intermission. Do not hast or cease at any time from thy work, nor go about to practice or use the sophistical bounds of thy works, but only intend to the complement of this work. Also, Rasa saith, it is most sure for thee to apply thy work diligently, nor do thou leave off thy work, being as it were a tree cut down from the bough. Be thou therefore steadfast, and of a long continual mind and will in the regiment. Shut most close thy vessel, and cease at no time, for there is no generation of things but by a continual motion, exclusion of air, and heat temperate. Study and mark also, when that you are in your work, all the signs that shall appear in every decoction, and remember them, for they be necessary for the workmen, to the complement and fulfilling of this work. For it is necessary to continue the work and moderate the fire. Therefore, all these things dispose as aforesaid. Put the vessel with the medicine in the moist fire, so that half the vessel be in the fire, and the other half without, to this end, that every day may be looked upon. And within forty days, the upper part or outside of the medicine shall appear black like tar. And that is a sign that the yellow body is truly turned into mercury. Therefore Alpha Danius saith, where that you do see blackness appear to that water, know ye that now the body is liquefied, and that truly is the same that Rasis saith, the disposition of our stone is one, that it be put in his vessel, and that it be thoroughly sodden, until all do rise and ascend dissolved. Also in another place, continue upon him a temperate heat, until that it be dissolved into water impalpable, and that all the tincture do go forth into blackness, which is a sign of solution. Also, Lully saith, when thou seest blackness inure to that water in all things, then know that the body is liquefied, for the philosophers do call this blackness the first merit. For that the man is joined to the woman, and it is a sign of a perfect medicine and mixture, but all the tincture is not drawn forth all at once, but it goes forth by little and little every day until that in a long time it be complete and finished, and that, that is dissolved, doth ever go up to the top. Although that which is remaining beneath be the more, whereupon Avicenna saith, that which is spiritual doth ascend up into the vessel. And that which is blackness doth conjoin together the spirit to the body, 
Wherefore, an exagra saith, by the continuance of the fire in the regiment to the number of forty days. Both shall be made a water permanent, the blackness being covered, which said blackness, if it be governed as it ought to be, it doth not stay away above forty days of the color of blackness. Also Pythagoras saith, as long as the obscure blackness doth appear, the woman doth rule, which is the first strength of our stone, for unless that it be black, it cannot be white nor red. Also Avicenna in the chapter of humors saith, heat and moisture doth first make blackness, and his moisture endureth until the superfluity thereof be removed and then it becometh white. Also in our works, first they be made black, secondly white, and thirdly by a greater intention and composition of fire, it behooveth to be made yellow. Whereupon it is written in the book called Multifar, in the sixth chapter in the first detection, which is called Putrefaction, when our stone is made black, that is to say, black earthy by the drawing forth of his moisture, wherein the whiteness is hid, and when the same whiteness is reversed upon his blackness, and is fixed with his earth by easy tossing. Then is made the white, in which whiteness the redness is hid. And when it is well sodded, by augmentation of the fire, the same earth is then turned into redness, as after it shall be taught. Now again, let us return to our black stone, being strongly closed in his vessel. Let it stand therefore continually in the moist fire, until that the white color do appear like unto the manner of most white. F2. Salt and this color, according to the philosophers, is called sal ammoniac, without which nothing can be made or is profitable in our work. And so the intensive whiteness appearing, the perfect marriage and copulation indissoluble of the stone is made. Then is that of Hermes fully fulfilled, say, that which is above is as that which is beneath is. That which is above is to obtain miracles of one thing. But Pythagoras saith, when that you do see whiteness coming above, then be you sure that redness is hid in that whiteness. But before that the white do appear. Many colors shall appear. Therefore Diadem saith, Seed the man and vapor together, until that both of them be congealed into dryness. For unless that it be made dry, diverse colors will not appear, for it is ever black. As long as moisture doth rule, and then it sendeth forth diverse colors. For in diverse manner and at diverse times, it will be moved from color to color, until it comes to a firm whiteness. Also Xenon saith, all kinds of colors will appear in it until the black humidity be dried up. But of such colors take you no great care, for they be no true colors. For it shall very oftentimes be citrine, and very oftentimes redness will appease, and oftentimes it will be dry, and also liquid, before whiteness, but the spirit will never be fixed with the body. But with white color, Flavius saith, between the blackness and the white, there shall appear all color, even as many as can be named or thought of. From diversity of which colors, diverse men gave it diverse names, and almost innumerable names. For some did it on purpose to conceal and obscure the art, and some did it of envy. But in the chapter of the appearing of diverse colors in the medicine, there is a definition of his blackness. For whereas the blackness and the white be extreme color, and all other colors be mean colors, therefore as often soever as anything of the blackness doth descend, so often another color and another doth appear, until it be an extreme whiteness. But for descending and ascending Hermes saith, it ascends from the earth up to heaven, and descends again from the heaven to the earth, and receives the superior strength and the inferior strength. And note that if there appear between the black and the white any yellow color, care not for them, for they do not continue, nor are permanent. But they are slippery and passing away, for there can be no permanent nor perfect red, except that go before it. Rosarium saith, No man can come from the first to the third, but by the second, for it appeareth that the white is to be looked for in the second, when that it is the complement of all the work. For afterwards it will never be varied into any other true permanent color, but red. Now we have the white, therefore now it behooveth thee to make red. For the white medicine and the red do not differ between themselves in any essence, but only in this point. That the red medicine hath need of a greater subtiliation, a longer digestion, and a hotter fire in his regimen, and therefore forasmuch as the end of the operation of the white is the beginning of the operation of the red. And forasmuch as that which is the complement of the one is the beginning of the other. Therefore, unless that thou dost first make white the medicine, thou canst never make. F3. True red. But now how it shall be made red, we will tell thee shortly. First, the medicine to the red must be put into our moist fire, until the white color appear, as is aforesaid. Afterwards, take the vessel out of the fire and put it in a pot of fired ashes, and warm water half full, and let you vessel of glass with the medicine in the ashes unto the midst, and under the earthen pot make a dry, temperate fire, and continual, 
but the heat of this dry fire must be greater by double at the least. Then was the heat of the moist fire. And by the benefit of this fire, the white medicine shall receive red tincture. Truly thou canst not err if thou wilt continue the dry fire. Whereupon Rosarium sa, with a dry fire and a dry calcination, roast the dry until that it be made like cinnabar. Whereunto from thenceforth put nothing, neither oil or vinegar, or anything whatsoever it be, until it be roasted to a complement of redness, and of a truth, the mere redder that the medicine is made, the more stronger it is, and of more power, and that is more roasted will be more redder, and that which is most roasted is most precious. Therefore with a dry fire, burn it without fear, until that it be closed most redly, whereupon a philosopher saith, in continuing the red, seeth the white until that it be clothed in purple, and beauty, but some have it, Continue the red and the white until it be clothed in purple clothing. Do not cease, although the red do a little slack to appear, for the fire being augmented, as I said before, after white of the first colors appear, then a mean red when among these colors shall appear a yellow. But his color is not continuing, for after that it be perfect, red will not much tarry to appear, which appearing, be thou sure that thy work is perfected. For Hermes see, in turba philosophorum, between white color and red, there appeareth only but one color, viz. Citrine which is yellow, but it varieth more or less. Also Maria saith, when thou hast true white, thou then afterwards shalt have a false yellow, and afterwards a perfect red, and then thou shalt have the glory of the clearness of all the world. The first manner of multiplication of our medicine. Elixir is multiplied by two manners of ways, that is to say, by solution of heat and by solution of drying. By solution of heat is thus. Take the medicine and put it into the vessel of glass and bury it in our moist fire seven days or more until the medicine be dissolved into water without any troublesome appearing in it. But the solution of drying is that that shall take the vessel of glass with the medicine, and hang it in a brass pot, having a straight mouth in boiling, and let the mouth be closed, so that by the vapor of the boiling vapor ascending, the medicine may be dissolved. And note that the same boiling water must not touch the vessel of glass with the medicine, by the space of three fingers. And this solution is made strongly in one day, or two, or three. After that, the medicine is made and dissolved. Take it from the fire to cool, to fix, to congeal, to harden or dry. And so let it be very often dissolved, for the more often it be resolved. So much the more perfect it is, whereupon Benilla's faith, when that our brass is turned, and very oftentimes reiterated, it is made better than it was before. And such a solution is a subtiliation of the medicine, and its virtuous sublimation, whereupon the oftener it is sublimated or subtiliated, so much often it gets a greater virtue and a greater tincture, and colors more abundantly, and the more it shall make perfect and convert and turn the more, whereupon in the fourth solution it shall get so much virtue and tincture, that one part shall be able upon one thousand of mercury cleanse, that it shall convert it into gold or silver, better than that which is taken out of the mines of the earth. Whereupon Rasa said, the multiplication of this goodness depends wholly on the often reiteration of the sublimations and fixation of the perfect medicine. For the oftener the order of this complement be reiterated, so much more does increase the nourishment thereof, and the virtue and strength thereof is augmented. For the oftener that thou shalt sublimate and dissolve the perfect medicine, so much the more often thou shalt win and gain at every time to cast one upon one thousand. As if at first it fall upon a thousand, the second time it will convert ten thousand, the third time it will be cast upon, and convert one hundred thousand, and the fourth time upon one. Zero, 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 zero. The fifth time upon an infinite, for Meridoc says, Know you for certainty, that how much the more and often our stone is dissolved, so much the more the spirit and body are conjoined together. And of this, for every time, the tincture is multiplied. The second way of multiplication is another way. The, the medicine is multiplied by fermentation, for the ferment to white is pure silver, and the ferment to red is pure gold. Therefore, cast one part of the medicine upon ten part, or twenty percent the ferment, and all such shall be medicine and put it upon the fire in a vessel of glass, and shut it well, so that no air may enter nor pass forth, and let it be dissolved or sublimated so often as thou wilt, and as thou doest the first medicine. One part of the second medicine shall receive as much as one part of the first medicine. Whereupon Rasis said, Now have we fully made our medicine, hot and cold, dry and moist, equally temperate, whereof whatever we do put to it shall be of the same complexion that it is put to, Therefore conjoin or marry him that he may bring forth fruit like unto himself. But yet do not conjoin or marry it with any other thing to convert it, but with it that it was in the beginning, whereupon is written in speculum, the spiritual earth which is the elixir, must be first in his own body, 
from whence it was taken at the beginning of his solution, that is to marry his earth. And it being so rectified and purified by his soul to conjoin it by conjunction of his body, from whence it had its beginning, also it is said in the book called Gemma Salitaris. The white work has need of a white fermentation, whereby when he is white with his white fermentation, and when he is made red in his red ferment, for then that white earth is ferment of ferment. For when it is joined to Luna, all is ferment to cast upon Mercury, and upon every body being unperfected metal to make it Luna, and with the red thereof must be joined soul, and that is medicine upon Mercury, and Luna to make it soul. Also, Rasa says, it behooves that he be mingled with white and red quicksilver of his kind, and that it be contained and kept that it fly not away. Therefore, we bid that quicksilver be mingled with quicksilver until one clear water be made of two quicksilvers, and not to make three mixtures until every one of them be dissolved into water. But in their conjunction, put a little of the work upon much of the body, as upon four, and in a certain time it will be made in the nature of powder, which is of red or white color. And this powder is elixir complete. And truly, the elixir must be of a simple powder. Also, Egidia said, a thousand and twenty-five stones of solution put solution, and a hundred percent of solution desiccate and put all to the fire, and keep the fume, and take heed that nothing fly from it. Tarry and dwell nigh the vessel, and behold and observe the marvelous working, how it shall be removed from color to color in less than an hour of a day, until it comes to the mark or prick, or bud of whiteness or redness, for it will soon melt in the fire and come on into the air. When the fume fills the fire, it will enter into the body, and the spirit will then be pulled together, and the body will then be fixed, clear white or red. Then divide the fire, suffering it to cool and be cold. If one of these does fall upon a thousand, or mercury, or any other body, it turns into the best gold or silver, according to how its ferment is prepared. Therefore, it does appear that he who does not congeal quicksilver that will suffer the fire and join it to pure silver. He directs no right way to the white work. And he who does not make a red quicksilver that can sustain all fire and join it to mere gold does not take the right way to the red work. For by solution and fermentation, the work or medicine may be multiplied into an infinite. Note that the elixir gives a very light fusion or melting, even like wax. Whereupon Hermes said, Our medicine necessarily ought to be of a most subtle substance and pure adherence, cleaving to mercury of his nature, and of a most thin and easy liquefaction like water. Also, in the book named Omni Datum Optimum, when the elixir is well prepared, it ought to be melted upon a burning plate or burning coals, just as wax melts. For what you do in the white, do it in the red, as the operation is the same in both, both in multiplication and in projection. Geber the philosopher bears witness in his fifth book and tenth chapter that there are three orders of medicines. The first order is that which is cast upon imperfect bodies and does not take away the corruption, but imperfects them. For it does give tincture, but that tincture 